In our final video on the origin of life, now that we've established how single-celled life developed all the way from the chemical evolution up to the origination of small organic molecules, then larger organic polymers, and then all the way up to protocells, and then prokaryotes and eukaryotes, we can finally look at the origins of multicellularity to finish off our discussion of life. Because more, most of the advanced life on Earth is multicellular. All advanced life on Earth is multicellular. So it's important to figure out where it came from. Now that we understand where unicellularity or one cell organisms came from. So origins of multicellularity. First of all, one thing that we can look at for this, just like always, is the record, the geologic record. What we notice is a couple of different important dates. 1.8 billion years ago is an important date because this is when we first start seeing small multicellular eukaryotes. That's a good important date to remember. Then later on, we start 1.2 billion years ago, let's say, we start seeing red algae, which are much bigger than our small multicellular eukaryotes seen 1.8 billion years ago. And then finally, about 710 to 570. Now notice, it's MYA, million years ago. We finally see the first animal fossils. And these animal fossils provide us some great evidence that sponges were the first animals. So sponges were the first animals that came first. And um, later, um, larger, more diverse animals came. Larger, more diverse animals. Um, this specifically was seen during a period, remember a period is part of that record, part of that time scale, during the Edicaran period. That's when we start seeing some more diversification and uh, increase in size in terms of animal life. Another part of multicellularity that's very important is the Cambrian explosion. This is another point in history, another origin point that helped expand multicellularity across the Earth. The Cambrian explosion, specifically, we can focus on, let's see what time of our Earth's history are we looking at. We're looking at the Phanerozoic Eon, something that we've mentioned before. Then we're also looking at the Paleozoic Era, that's when this occurred. And specifically, we're looking at about 535 million years ago for this Cambrian explosion to occur. The Cambrian explosion is simply defined as a point or an era of rapid evolution. And we know that evolution means you're getting better, you're getting more evolved, you're getting stronger, you're getting faster, you're getting smarter. What we start seeing is many, many different things in terms of rapid evolution. We start seeing things like uh, new plants, new, more advanced plants start evolving. We start seeing predators, and we also start seeing prey. But specifically, we notice this because we finally see evidence of things like claws. Claws are a very predatorial adaptation. But prey is also seen, and we start seeing prey adaptations, specifically things like defensive adaptations. So we'll write that down, defensive, um, just write A-D-A-P-S, adaptations, things like spines. So it's very interesting now, the Cambrian explosion gives us predator prey, new plants, as opposed to just very general sponges, larger animals. We start seeing much more advanced and diverse organization of uh, animals. And the last thing we're going to talk about for this lecture, and I'm just going to drag it over here, is the colonization of land. Most of life, as we remember, started as that probiotic soup. Remember the probiotic soup hypothesis? Everything was sort of originated in water. Now we're finally transitioning into land, and there was a strong transition about 500 million years ago. 500 million years ago is when uh, many animals started promoting and going towards land because of adaptations that developed. These adaptations included and were a part of land plants. Land plants experienced some adaptations. Um, plants and fungi created a very mutualistic relationship that we'll talk about in just a second. And in addition, 
um, the most important adaptations, you could say, are the ones that we actually were involved in. Um, arthropods, and specifically also tetrapods, gained many different adaptations that increased their diversity. So diversity. I'm going to write increased diversity. So what do I mean by colonization of land? Basically things started moving towards land, specifically land plants, let's say. Land plants started getting things like waxy coats. Why would you need a waxy coat? Because you are transferring to dry land, dry area. So you need to prevent what is known as desiccation. Desiccation is the loss of water. What do you do? You develop a nice waxy coat. It keeps water on the inside. And you also develop what is known as a vascular, I'm going to squeeze this in, a vascular system. Vascular system is just a transport system, a way to transport things within the plant because now you can't just use water that's all around you to transport it. You're on land, so you've got to create your own system to transport nutrients within you. Plants and fungi developed a very interesting mutualistic relationship known as mycorrhizae. You don't really need to know the details. You're going to have a whole lecture devoted to fungi, and you'll learn about this a lot more. But it's important to note that we start seeing relationships amongst different things once we get onto land, plants and fungi specifically. And then lastly, arthropods and tetrapods, we are part of the tetrapods in this situation, their diversity increased drastically. And these were the guys that definitely won out in terms of this colonization of land because they became the most diverse, they became the most evolved, they gained the best adaptations, and eventually it led to the most advanced organisms seen on Earth. So overall, we've now understood the origin of life. We went all the way from our chemical evolution up to multicellularity, and hopefully you have a better understanding, and most importantly, a better appreciation of where life originated.